Welcome to the second clip of chapter eight. We were talking about decent work. And in this clip, I will talk about one of the main theories that informed the dimensions of decent work. And that those are theories about stress. So after this clip, you will understand the following. I will start with a definition of stress and then I will tell about stress theories in particular when strain leads to stress and when stress becomes unhealthy and problematic. Uh, I will also explain how psychological and social and behavioral processes uh, interact with physical and biological stress, stress reactions. And I'll end with the HRM perspective and tell you what can be done to prevent the negative consequences of continuous stress. So in the literature, stress is a pattern of physiological, emotional and behavioral reactions occurring in situations where individuals perceive threats to their importance, which they may not be able to meet. We distinguish two types of stress, acute stress and chronic stress. In essence, stress is a healthy reaction. reaction. Imagine a situation where you have to do a, a presentation for uh, an audience that you don't know yet that might be a stressful situation. It may raise your awareness that you are doing something that's really exciting, it makes you a bit tense. On that moment, your body helps you to perform well. You will, you will be very alert. Uh, your stress hormones will produce, uh, for example, adrenaline, which will help you to, um, to be a top performer on that moment. However, it can also be that the stressor is uh, problematic. And for example, this is the case when the stressor is there to stay. In a normal situation, the stressor comes and goes. In the, in the example of a doing an, an exciting presentation, the stressor will go after the presentation is done. And then the body has time to, back, to sit back and to relax and to, to you know, bring all the activated system back to the desired rest state. Uh, but sometimes the stressor is there and it's really difficult to detach from it. Imagine the uh, uh, young working parents with, with young children. They have to be alert all the time. They have to perform at work and they have to look after the kids. And this can be a problematic stage. It brings some ris risks if there is no time to recover from a stressor. I'm going to explain this using a model and um, building on the biological and further psychological and uh, behavioral responses that happen after a stressor is there to stay. So let's first have a look at the basics. Stress happens once there is a mismatch between a situation that is perceived as threatening to a person, when a person feels that they are not immediately sure how to act or react to the situation. So a stressor might be like the presentation. It may, it may be something that you didn't do before and therefore causes a feeling of stress. So for, for somebody who did presentations like a thousand times, the same situation can be completely stress-free or maybe a little bit tense because it's exciting all the time, but it's not a stressor as such. So the perceptions, individual interpretations about the situation will determine whether somebody finds themselves capable of dealing with the situation of not, or not. And one finds oneself of incapable or not well suited to, to deal with the situation, then uh, all kinds of responses happen, both in the body, psychologically and socially. For example, within the body, uh, the body will start producing hormones to try and restore this feeling of stress to, to be able to deal with it. Already, already mentioned adrenaline, but also cortisol. All these hormones in your body help you to perform well in stressful situations. And they are um, useful. They are important, but they are not endless. So biological hormones, they can be depleted. So in situations where stressors, they are to stay you can, in the end, feel exhausted. And I'll demonstrate that in a few slides later. Slide, slides later. Also, there are a lot of so psychological processes happening. So what makes the situation fearful for some and not for others? Um, and when it's a fearful situation, um, how do you cope with that? How do you deal with that? So which emotions are there? And how do these emotions 
again reinforce or just help how to deal with the situation. And finally, uh, stress will also also exists in social responses. For example, your behavior to, uh, towards others will, might change. You may have a, a, um, a more nearby focus on things that are immediately important and then you can't oversee all the other things that also uh, need to, to happen. So stress has a lot of consequences, a lot of responses in, difficult, in different levels. So I'm going to focus on chronic stress. So remember, acute stress is a healthy situation. You, you, you will just be able to cope with it. Stress hormones and the psychological and the behavioral responses in the end all are aimed at taking the stressor away, dealing with it, and then afterwards you can relax. However, stress is no longer a healthy response when, once a stressor reaches a chronic state. That means that you have to be continuously alert, you have to be continuously on, so to speak, in order to deal with the stressor. But if that starts to happen, your biological system may become depleted of hormones that you need to be able to deal with that effectively. So let's turn to a, to a model that illustrates how the body responds to stress levels. And we start with a situation where there is homeostasis. There are no stressors, nothing happens, and you're just your, you know, your nice relaxed self. You sit back, relax, and everything goes smooth. Then something happens. Um, there is a stressor, and the alarm bell in your body goes off. And then the body starts responding in different ways. So you start to think about the situation and that triggers all the biological processes in your body to help you be alert and to deal with the system. So immediately after the perception of the situation as a threat, your body starts producing hormones that help you to be um, in a very alert and active mode. And that will help you to deal with the situation to make, to help you make the situation go away and to go back to the homeostasis that, you, that your body likes to be in. And this process we call an allostasis. So this is the, the de desire, the physiological reaction that helps the body to be alert, to deal with the stressor and to try and come back to the desired status of equilibrium. If there's acute stress, this works. So you are more alert, you, have, uh, uh, you are very tense, but being in this state will help you deal with the stressor and then you can push it away and move back into this desired state of homeostasis where all the systems are in balance and you feel good. However, like that, when the stressor is there to stay, you're starting to deplete your, uh, your biological resources. You're starting to feel tired, you're starting to feel tense. Uh, it might affect your sleep. At this point, um, in the early phases of uh, towards exhaustion, um, people still feel good, relatively good. They feel tired, but at the top of their being. So uh, this is typical for uh, for young people starting in their careers. There's a lot of things happening. Everything is uh, exciting, and although they feel tired. They just continue because it is important and we have to do it. And I've never felt so good, but I'm trying to start also a little bit tired and starting to um, give up some things that I do normally in my, in my free time. So the system, biologically, but also in your, yeah, the other resources that you use in life, they start to deplete. If this then continues to go, at some point, the systems are becoming exhausted. The resources are starting to dry up. And that shows in a lot of uh, biological symptoms. So for example, um, you will have difficulty sleeping. This is a, a very important first signal. Uh, also, you, you feel like you have no appetite for sex, for, for example. So all these are biological indicators that something is wrong in your stress hormone management. If it then the stressor still goes on, still not goes away, then a moment comes where you start to feel exhausted. You start to feel that you're unable 
incapable to cope with all the demanding tasks that are at hand. You are out of energy. There is a point we know from people that are moving towards, uh, towards a burnout that there is a moment where they feel complete panic. I can't cope with this, with this demanding situation anymore. Literally, the body doesn't cooperate anymore. There's no energy left to deal with all the tasks that I have at, at hand. And then finally, this results in the ultim, ultimate phase of exhaustion that we know as a burnout. So a burnout is not just a psychological thing. It's literally a biological reaction to a prolonged per period of extreme levels of, levels of stress. A burnout is changing something in your hormone system and in your, in your brains as well. It is uh, shown that people that have had a burnout, they have scars in their brains. It takes a long time for people who are actually in a burnout to recover. It can take months or years. And even uh, people who are once in a burnout, they may stay as, um, receptible to future periods of, uh, of exhaustion. So it's in the individual, individual's interest to prevent that they reach a state of burnout. So to, to summarize this, uh, this chronic stress and what it does to the biological systems, preferred status is homeostasis, stress is a healthy reaction, allostasis will help you to deal with the, with the situation. However, when the stressor is there to stay, your, uh, your resources in your body, your stress hormones will deplete and they will cause uh, problems, physiological problems in your, in your body, lack of, lack, lack of sleep, uh, lack of uh, appetite, lack of appetite for sex as well, and uh, eventually can lead to a complete burnout. And like I said, this is a state that you don't want to be in. I think throughout this story, I mentioned a few occasions where I say, okay, it's your individual uh, situation, it's your individual uh, reaction to it. So it's not just your body that does things. Also psychological and uh, social processes interfere with the development of a burnout and the dealing with stress. So I'm going to dive a little bit deeper into the cognitions and the social consequences of prolonged, react uh, prolonged periods of stress. So we dealt with the first one, the biological response. It is the, the hormonal system that activates, you know, the awareness and the dealing with stress. But in the end, if it's on for a too long period, it will lead to have uh, negative consequences for health. Next to that, a parallel process that interacts closely with the biological responses is the sense making of individuals. So the cognitive responses of individuals who make sense of a situation. I already said that for some people doing an, a presentation to a new group of people is not a stressor at all. But for others, it might be really, it, it may cause real anxiety to, to be in front of strangers and to, do, and to do a presentation. So individual differences in experience, but also in your, you know, in your personality, they may interfere with how you interpret the situation and how you are able to deal with that situation. Um, and the moment a person interprets a situ situation as threatening, as something that they are not completely able of dealing with, then that activates the biological uh, system as well. So Lazarus was the, uh, the person who said that people react uh, in a psychological way on stressors, and this leads to, uh, to, feeling, ex to feeling tired and uh, depressed. The third pillar is the behavioral responses. And now we turn to uh, uh, a researcher called, called Hopful. And he said that stress is not only by situations that cause stress, but it can also uh, be caused by things that you lose in your social environment that are important to you. So things that you have in your, the resources you have in your personal life that, may, that bring you a good life, they are important for your homeostasis. This is the level that you want to have. The moment something changes in your social homeostasis, stress 
reactions will be activated. And he pointed out, that especially for example, situations where people lose their jobs are important situations that cause stress. And not only because it makes them worry and psychologically reacting, but also because it influences their behaviors. If somebody loses their job that affects how one can live, then uh, the most natural reaction is trying to keep what you have. So make sure that uh, you can pay the rent of your house, that you can, um, you know, that you can buy food. So the, uh, what happens is that the moment somebody loses a resource that is important to them, they will narrow their set of behaviors to maintain what they already have. So they will not invest any longer in things that are not immediately important, such as uh, an evening out with friends or, uh, you know, spending time to, to do an additional education. No, Hopful said that he noticed in people that have experienced loss in important resources, he sees a narrowing effect. And in a way, people, in the way they behave, they... Uh, they come in a vicious circle that one loss leads to another. So a loss of a job can lead to a loss of friends, can lead to a loss of social you know, feeling well, and then be a stressor in itself. So social situation leads to uh, behavioral responses and a, an effort to maintain the resources to keep up with the life that you had while giving up other resources which will in turn be, lead to a, a spiral of loss. You lose one thing, you lose the next, you lose the next, which will kind of in a, uh, yeah, encourage or speed up the, the stress process um, and eventually also the psychological and the physical well-being. So one, one, one example we came across in the, when we were doing a research in the... Um, labor migrants in Dutch warehouses. We interviewed workers uh, from Hungary um, and asking them, okay, how did you end up in uh, work that is typically characterized by long hours, insecurity, uh, uncertain living conditions. So basically precarious con work conditions. And uh, the quote that, uh, uh, that you can read here is that uh, a spiral of loss for one of the respondents led to the situation that he ended up working in this warehouse and he felt that there was no way out of it anymore. So he had uh, lost his, his parents, had uh, debts, uh, which made him go to Western Europe because the wages are higher there in the hope that he would build and save up uh, for future steps. However, uh, just surviving in a, in, in a new country where you don't know anything, living in, uh, on premises far away from, uh, from a village made the situation even worse. So he felt really uh, stressed and towards a burnout. So this brings us to, uh, to stresses at work. So what kind of sources for stress exist in the workplace? And these give hints to where we as human resource management can act from research, we know that, uh, that stressors lie in three domains of work. First of all, the task itself can be very de demanding. It can be just too much, too many tasks, but too difficult. Or it can be very unclear what is expected from you. All, all, all of these situations we know are stressful conditions. Social demands, think about conflicts with your superior, uh, feeling excluded, discrimination. So all these things in the social context of work can lead to a stressful situation. And finally, underestimated but really, really important, if people feel physically threatened at work, for example, by unsafe working conditions, this can again lead to, uh, to stress so this brings us to the question, how can you prevent stress? How can you manage it? Well, it's important to recognize that there are individual differences, uh, that differences in personal situations can lead to a very different interpretation whether a situation is a threat or not. So for example, differences in uh, private situations, families, uh, if so, do you have to look after others maybe in your spare time? It can also, you know, the combination of work and life can be uh, demanding. Uh, your own health, um, 
differences in personality, experience, knowledge, I already mentioned those. And for example, differences in being prepared to be able to deal with stress. So things like training, uh, coaching, and customization of work, these are all things that can help individuals to adjust the work to the situation that they can manage. In general, you can think about uh, work design practices for human resource management. For example, uh, giving people decision latitude about how they can do their job, um, making sure that people uh, feel empowered, that they, are, that they feel that they can do this, that they know what to do, and make sure that they are fairly rewarded for what they do. Also, think about social support by colleagues, think about anti-discrimination policies, think about inclusion climate. Um, I think about uh, making sure that people work in a safe environment and try to combat extremely long working hours. So wrapping up, now you know that stress is uh, sometimes positive and sometimes negative, um, that there are different processes simultaneously happening that makes that stress has negative consequences for individuals. Think about the biological process, the cognitive process, and the social and behavioral pro process. And for human resource management, you need to combat stress at the level of the job itself, but also reckon that there are individual circumstances and preferences that you need to take into account. So keeping in touch with your employees, talking, communication are key to understand what people need and to act upon that. Thank you.